Hi folks, and welcome to a bonus episode of Love You Like Crazy. So you may recall that in the third episode, we talked about The Hidden Staircase, which is a Nancy Drew book, and Carrie and I, uh, neither of us liked it all that much. I thought the costume thing was going to pay off because they had just before that, I think they had seen um, Mm -hmm. a gorilla face in the mirror. And I thought the same thing. I thought that they were going to go upstairs and find like the gorilla body. Right. But no. But no. And so there are all these things that could have happened and probably should have happened had we written this book, (laughs) but did not happen. So when we were recording the last episode where we talked about the Westing game with our special guest, Rachel Barron Singer, I knew that Rachel was a big Nancy Drew fan, so I thought I would give her a chance to respond. So we talked about Nancy Drew for a bit, and it felt like it didn't really fit in the Westing game episode per se, so I thought I would release it as a standalone thing. Unfortunately, Carrie wasn't there for that part of the discussion, so you won't hear her, but so it'll just be me and Rachel talking about Nancy Drew. Hope you like it. So, Rachel, uh, one thing before we get started, I wanted to give you the opportunity, if you want to, and I know I'm completely springing on this you, which was probably a bad idea. But um, we actually reviewed one of the Nancy Drew books uh, early on. Uh. (laughs) It was uh, The Hidden Staircase. Number two. Yes. And uh, we kind of kicked it around a little. So I just wanted to give you the opportunity to tell us why we're wrong, if you would like to. Okay. Well, I, you know, I collect Nancy Drew books. Nancy Drew is sort of a, you know, very near and dear series to my heart. I, I have to ask. Was it the original version that you read or was it the revised version? Because numbers one through, I want to say, 34 of the Nancy Drew series um, were all rewritten. Some of them just very minorly and some of them almost completely like um, Mystery at the Lilac in book number four is a completely different book Hmm. from the one that you can buy now. Um, but you can get the old copies. They have like, you know, reprinted versions specifically, um, that you can buy, or if you go to a used bookstore and the difference between the old books and the new books is that the old ones have 25 chapters and the new ones have 20. So which one did you read? We read the revised version. The revised version. Okay. So if my memory serves me correctly, that revised version is one of the ones where they changed quite a bit that I believe makes it a little less suspenseful and they kind of clean it up a little bit in terms of, you know, how I think the original one, it's been a while since I've read either of them, but I think the original one is a little bit darker Hmm. and um, a little more colorful and that they kind of, yeah, they kind of compressed it down. I feel like, you know, they're like the two older sisters, who yeah. own the house. And I feel like their characters were changed quite a bit. I think they might've even had different names. So, and again, I, it was something I have to go back and compare, but I, I seem to remember that the, the rewritten version of that book is something is, is a little bit of a disappointment compared to the first one. Now, obviously they, they changed them for good reason. Um, there is a lot of, you know, racism and you know just sort of recklessness on nancy's part that the publishers really wanted to clean up later um you know they made her more of like a you know god-fearing goody two-shoes than she was in, in the original books when she's sort of a little bit of a spitfire um and also a racist <laughs> so you know some of the things they cleaned up i don't like and some of the things they did clean up i'm like oh thank god sure um because <laughs> that's really awkward like there's i want to say it's book number four um the one that's like almost completely different you know, one of the ones that's always completely different there are a few but that's the first one um where she's like hiring a maid for their house um to help Hannah, I think, or maybe it's before Hannah's there, or Hannah's out of town, something like that. And, um, you know, she interviews several African American women, and it's, it's just like awful. And, um, I remember reading a review that somebody else had written of 
the original books where Nancy's being incredibly racist and you're like, at that point, I just wanted somebody to blow Nancy's cracker ass away. <laughs> and it's kind of <laughs> like, yeah. So, so in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, attitudes of the day that they took out um i think it was a good thing but in in terms of some of the stories and the excitement um i think maybe some sometimes that got lost and it might have translated into a duller novel yeah um right i think my big complaint about the book was kind of the pacing and the fact that at the end the villain is kind of dispatched dealt with completely off screen uh like the police round him up and that's basically it um and then uh and we are also like the uh nancy's friend whose name i forget is it helen yeah i think it might be helen um helen is in the first couple books and then i think in book five four or five bess and george come in um i believe it's helen corning in the first few books right so she talks about like early on she mentions that she's gotten engaged to this guy who Nancy has never met. And then he's mentioned once or twice else in the book, but never shows up and never has anything to do with anything. We were confused by that. That might, you know, I don't remember for sure, but that might've been one of the things that got written out. I know Helen plays like a bigger role in the third book in the bungalow mystery. And I think her fiance plays a role in that, at least in the original. Mm, yeah. I kind of wonder. Um, and then she sort of goes off and gets married and Nancy gets new friends. And mm. Helen, I think Helen comes back in like one book, many, many books later um, as, you know, a married friend. But there's not much to her. Obviously, Bess and George are are much better known and much, you know, more beloved. Helen, you know, is sort of a, an early prototype of, of a sidekick. But yeah, it, it's been a while, you know, I've done a few rereadings of the Nancy Drew books, but I haven't done one in probably about four or five years. So it's, um, it's hard for me to remember exactly, um, which minor characters play a role, but I think, I think her fiance does come in at some point. Yeah. I kind of wondered if it was setting up something for future books. You so. know, I think with some of these ones that they rewrote, you know, again, they're going down from 25 chapters to 20. And I do think some things got compressed and cut and a little bit lost. They made them a little bit quicker and snappier, but they may have lost some of the details. And, you know, apart from being a brazen racist, the, the original <laughs> books are actually much better written. Um, Mildred Wirt Benson was an author who wrote most of the first 14 novels. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she did a really good job with um you know the suspense and the writing and everything apart from the racism um and um i think when um the stratmeyer syndicate sort of went back through and cleaned up a lot of the stuff um some of her narrative voice was lost and uh, along with a lot of the other elements so i think you know as you go forward later in the series when the books are less altered. Um, you get less of a sense that something is lost or compressed there because they didn't have to go through and clean them up as much as they did with like the first, maybe like 15 or so. Gotcha. Well, thanks. <laughs> Anytime you want to talk about Nancy Drew, let me know. I, I, I don't do a whole lot with my knowledge of Nancy Drew, but it, it's obviously in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, it was either that or ask you about um, Spectre. <laughs> My other obsession. Yeah. Uh, Nancy Drew and James Bond, two things I'm completely obsessed with, but <laughs> people I think I would hate in real life. So that's my discussion with Rachel Baron Singer about Nancy Drew. Thanks to Rachel. And also, I forgot in the last episode to thank the Sentimental Favorites for letting us use their song, Hey There, for our theme. You can find Rachel on Twitter as at Girl Detective. So there's that Nancy Drew connection. Thanks for listening. Hope you have found it interesting. And we'll try to have another episode for you soon. Bye. Give me a call when you get back. Hey there.